We're now recording. Hello, everybody. I am Dave Finale, and I have with me Tim Harris. Uh, Tim's been around a long time, but, but first, we have to understand that this is Real Estate Talk, TGIF, episode 92. Coming, with you, coming to you a little bit late today, but we're fine with that. And you all know what TGIF stands for, right? Tim, do you know what it stands for? Is it Friday? I don't know. I've lost track of the day. No, no the actually, it does not mean that. It means, thank God, it's finale. That's me, right? Oh, God. But Friday <laughs> does work. I'm not going to say it's wrong. So, anyway, um, Tim, you and I had a great conversation earlier in this week. I've been a fan of yours and your wife's for a long time. Um, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd like to get um, into our conversation without any delay. So, um, You've been coaching agents for quite some time, and you've been through, honestly, you've been through several, um, let's say, market adjustments, right? Um, what has been the biggest thing that you've seen over the last couple of weeks and months that, that, that is, is staring right at you uh, in the world of real estate? Well, so I have to start out by saying, I went to my doctor this morning and I got a proper prescription of coffee. The doctor actually says I can continue drinking until fully caffeinated. So I'm good. Good. So to answer, so to answer your question. So I, my, uh, my wife and I just had our birthdays. She's a year younger than me, but I just turned 50 at uh, the beginning of this month. It's like the world gives me a present of a pandemic, a pandemic you know, but so in the, and Julie and I got into real estate basically right out of college. We bought our first house when we were in college. Our first year in business, we sold over 100 homes. But I, let's not talk about all that. If they want to learn about us, we're all over the internet. They can buy our book on Amazon, Harris Rules. So if you're asking me to compare this to anything in my lifetime or your lifetime, you can't. There are no comparisons. Agreed. You can't, Agreed. You can't even – like I've heard some people trying to, to – like. Um, you know, combined September 11th meets the housing crash, meets the tech bubble, meets all the other things we've experienced going back into the 80s. But there are no comparisons. This is completely different. Um, and, and the reason that's completely different is because of the, the reaction. It's a global, essentially a global recession. I don't want to hit the headlines, but what matters most, what agents should be paying attention to, and what Dave, I prefer not to talk about, because let's not do a health PSA and tell people how to avoid the virus and whatnot, because that information is everywhere. Right. What, what, we're, what we've been focusing on, what you and I talked about, was what happens after, right? What's the world like after this thing? Because never before in the history of humanity has uh, anything like this happened, but the, the thing that matters the most, aside from the unfortunate horribleness that's happening to a lot of people's health, but what's really going to matter, what's really going to have probably a longer lasting negative effect, frankly, than even the virus, is going to be the recession. There, I mean, where did, what was it yesterday or the day before the numbers came out? And there's a 50 year, uh, there's more unemployed right now than there has been in the past 50 years. I've heard and read differing things. I'm trying to parse where Julie and I get our information because everything's politicized nowadays. Right. But it, it's, a, it, it's some people are saying 20%, some people are saying 30%, some people are saying 40% unemployment. I mean, these numbers have never been experienced before. And here, here's the other thing I thought was really interesting. Every, the, the headliner is, this, you know, the $2 trillion stimulus package. But the fact is, is it's not two, it's six. Because if you read, and you don't just read the headlines, you'll see that $2 trillion was basically for bailouts, for unemployment, for this, that, and the other thing. But the $4 trillion goes to the banks. The four trillion goes to essentially continuing to provide the lubrication to the machine that is our economy. So this whole stimulus isn't two trillion, it's six trillion. Now to put that in perspective, the last go around during the whole entire housing crash between arguably late 07 and you know whenever, they never stopped doing quantitative easing. The Fed, and I promise you I will not get nerdy. I will not, I will not I go down. I don't care, go ahead, man. Well, it's interesting to me. There, there's a great book that I read a long time ago called The New Case for Gold by Jim Rickert, uh, Rickerts or Rikerts. I'm not sure which. I love that book. It's a great book. I mean, there's another book I'll suggest everyone reads. is um, Profits Aren't Everything, They're the Only Thing. And if they're looking for a real estate book to read, I, uh, obviously I would hope that they would read our book, Harris Rules. 
<laughs> I'm looking at myself in your camera wearing my hat. I never wear a hat on camera. I'm only wearing it because I need a haircut. Because <laughs> I'm in quarantine. We're not allowed to leave. I can't get a haircut. My hair place is closed. So anyway. Um, <laughs> but, but, but the point is that w the reality of it is, is that during the last recession, the total amount of money that they pushed into the economy was less than a trillion dollars. And this time around, it's six trillion dollars, which means the government obviously is trying to overcorrect. But the reality of it is, is that this is going to be a, a recession that's probably going to grow into some kind of depression. Now, why do I say that? And what does that even mean? Really, the recession depression conversation is just semantics. There's no technical definition for what a depression is. There is a technical definition for a recession. Try to Google what the recession is, and they'll say two quarters in a row of negative GDP. Try to Google what a depression is. There is no definition. Right. Well, it's this. Okay, this is what the definition is. When you have this many people lose their jobs that fast, um, you're going to have it, what really is, uh, for example, what percent of all employers in the country have 50 or fewer employees? I'm working on this. Julie and I are writing something for um, – for our podcast, and I'm trying to figure that out. I've heard different numbers, but both of the numbers were in the 60% range. So 64, 67% of all people work for companies that have 50 or fewer employees. Well, those 50, those companies that size, generally speaking, have single digit margins. Restaurants, you just go down the gamut of all the businesses you can imagine. Brokerages are operating on less than 3%, right? I mean, the, right. most businesses are hand to mouth, which a lot of people don't realize. Most businesses, they have one bad month, maybe they'll get through it. Three bad months, they're out. And that's what's exactly what's going to happen. And so when you look at, essentially, look how fast all these businesses laid people off. Just, what was it, 3.3 million people were reported yesterday? Yes. I mean, that's incredible. So if you see more and more people lose their jobs, and everyone's saying there's going to be a V-shaped recovery, how? Well, how's that going to happen? So let's say we go like this, and the thing, are those employees, are all those employers are going to all of a sudden magically come out of the woodwork and say we're open for business again they're broke they're out of business they're not coming back there's look there's small bit that that four billion is going to some of that's going to go towards small business loans small business grants it's going to go to unemployment it's going to go to things like that but that's not going to be enough because being an entrepreneur and you are too sir you don't what happens is that if you have this kind of financial setback which a lot of businesses are going to have they're not going to have the motivation to come back because it's going to be too deep of a hole to, to, to dig out of. And now unemployment benefits are going to be up to 39 weeks. I don't know if you remember the last go around, David, but they kept on extending unemployment benefits. I do, I do, I do. Completely. For years. Right. Yeah, for like three years. So right. when, you see, when you see people getting on the dole and receiving their weekly check, unemployed people, uh, where's their motivation to go back to work? So this is what I'm talking about. Nobody completely, I don't certainly understand it all, but no one completely understands the ripples that are going to happen as a result of essentially what's happening uh, to our economy right now. It's going to be massive. Okay, so you've got the ripples, you've got the people going out of business, you've got the people being unemployed, but, but don't you also have, with the unemployed, don't you also have bigger companies laying people off because they, they, they can't pay them? I mean, okay, so let's use an example. Wouldn't the MGM Casino, the hotel in Las, Las Vegas, they're laying people up. Well, don't they have a job if they come back? I don't know. I mean, the, your real question probably is, is how long will it take for people to feel comfortable going to the MGM hotel again after the virus, you know, after, after we're allowed to travel again? How long will it take for people to feel financially replenished to have the money to go on vacation? How long will it take for all that to restart? This is what I'm talking about. Nobody knows. It's not going to be a snapback. Most people are going to go, most individual people, not even real estate people, most individual people are going to have such a financial punch in the gut from this, even with unemployment, that it's going to take them, how long is it going to take them to feel comfortable doing anything again, going out to a movie? I mean, this, these are the realities that no one's really talking about yet. I, I get that. I get that. And, and, and I, I, you're talking about, the fear that everybody's going to have that that's going to linger. Is that correct? Totally. Well, right. I mean, Julie and I were, we're working on, again, we're always writing for our podcast, but one of the things that she and I are bouncing back and forth in chat 
are like, we're trying to come up with a long list of positive things that will come as a result of this. Like, and we've come up with some pretty good ones. You know, there's, there's going to be some really, you know, bright, like I'll give you one. I, I, Julie and I both heard this story. It was wonderful. I think it was in New York City. You can't adopt a dog or a cat right now because people who are locked in their homes were lonely, so they went out and adopted all the dogs and the cats in the humane societies. Oh, geez. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. so there's, there's going to be a sea change to the, to, I mean, it's going to be weird. I personally think it's going to be weird when, uh, when someone offers to shake your hand. I mean, the shaking of the hand thing, that might be, I mean, that's, a, that's mostly a Western thing, like a Western, uh, you know, uh, Western countries thing. That's not the way they do it in other parts of the country. I mean, maybe the reason that the Asians have bowed is because going back generations, they knew that that was a, somehow there was some relationship to touching and passing along. Who knows what? I mean, that, you know, so we're going to see all kinds of different things. That are going to change. I get that. So, so, so let me give you a scenario. Let me give you a scenario. I want to get your reaction to it. One of the scenarios that I have and, 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 and thought processes that I've been going through is, so in real estate, right? So you got people... People now, there are still people that want to sell their homes. There's still people that want to buy. And they're getting in a little bit to the market, a lot of virtual this, virtual that. Um, but my thought was that, okay, so people are going to be, let's use the word phrase, cooped up in their homes now, right? And they're going to either, I think there's one or one of three things is going to happen. One, they wanted to sell and they're going to sell. Two, people have decided that, you know what, they really do like their house and they might make a couple of changes and renovations. And then there's that other group, I believe, which is going to help the market as we get back up and people getting jobs and stuff, is they're going to hate their house so much for being cooped up in it, they want to get out. And I think, I, I think there's a market there. What do, you, what do you think about those three scenarios? Does it make, they make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Actually, I was having a very similar, your points are excellent. I was having a similar conversation with Rob Johnson. He's the um, just a massive agent that no one heard of because he doesn't have a huge ego, but he's the number one agent in Greenwich, Connecticut, one of the most expensive markets in the country. You know, yes, it is. You're an East Coast guy, yep. and he's yeah, and he's um, he's talking about the fact that a lot of his uh, customers are basically you know locked in their homes, and he said he thinks during this time they're probably spending more time in their homes than they have in forever because most of them, the man and the woman, are both you know in New York City working all day, and now they're in their homes. He thinks, and I think it's a valid you know, that there's going to be a resurgence of the things you just talked about. People essentially reinvesting in their home and seeing, you know, who knows? I don't know. I mean, these are all good things, right? We can talk about that. But David, can we take a pivot? Because there's something every agent needs to be doing right now. Let's, let's do it, Tim. Go ahead. Okay. So, and we've been talking about this mindlessly and endlessly on our own podcast to the point where, I mean, uh, we have three writers that work for us. They're all telling us we need to keep talking about it, but I'm so bored of talking about it. But I'm going to say it anyway. Um, so here's a little, there's a, every single agent listening right now, and this is official next week, but I'm telling you what it's going to say, needs to be doing mortgage forbearance on their primary residence, on their secondary residence, on their vacation home, da, 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 and maybe even on commercial property, though I haven't read anything confirming it's going to be available on commercial property. And here's how this is going to work. Now, um, the program that we expect to have happen is going to give everyone with essentially a one phone call or one online form up to 12 months of mortgage forbearance. Which means, and now, the, I've read one place that the interest won't be charged for the next 12 months. I've read another thing that says the interest in the pay, and the payments will be tacked on the end of the mortgage, not when the forbearance period is over. Whether you think you need it or not, you absolutely positively have to be asking for mortgage forbearance. Julie and I have oh, dozens of rental properties. And we have only four mortgages. And sure enough, the most expensive of all the mortgages, the tenant basically says they can't pay the rent. Okay, so that's, but we can afford it. But the point is, is that if you're an agent right now and you have your own cash flow, you're saying, I'm good, Tim, I'm good. Or you're one of these Pollyanna people, you think, oh, everything's going to snap back and everything's going to be good by June. And everything's, no, don't do that. Do the forbearance. If you want to make your payment during the forbearance, that's fine. But keep your powder dry, save your cash. Get forbearances on your car payments, on your leases, on your credit card payments, everything. Get forbearances on everything. Stop all cash flow or money going out the door as fast as you can. Um, anything extracurricular, what's the word? Help me out. Curricular. Oh, shit. I'm you can't do it either. So we both need more caffeine. I, have, I, I know, right? 
Colorway. Extra I need an ID bag. Curricular? No. Oh, there you go. You got, you got it. it. You got anyway, it. go ahead. All right. Okay, so anything in your business that is not leading, really anything in your business needs to be canceled, truthfully. And that's mean your branding, your fancy website. Do not buy buyer leads right now. Buyer leads, buyers in general, if you're, and I know 90% of everyone out there, because I've gotten into this little debate two or three times doing events like this, people want to argue that buyers are the viable, most viable business. Hell no. Buyers right now, if you're just dependent on buyers, you're going to be out of business, no doubt. Because every buyer out there is going to be fearful of the prices going down, of the interest rates going down. They're going to keep renting. They're going to stay put. They're not going to move. There is no such thing as a buyer that has to buy. There is a such thing as a seller has to sell, no matter what the market conditions are, no matter what the pandemic is, no matter who the president is. So in this market, more than ever, you need to be focusing primarily on sellers. Um, so next phase, there is unemployment. And I think NAR had their hand in on this. Um, uh, for, that's going to be available to self-employed people. How amazing is that? I, and I, tell me about that. Well, so it looks, and Julie and I, again, we're researching the snot out of this for our podcast, but it looks like agents are going to be eligible. I laugh because I'm wondering how many agents even make this amount of money now, but are going to be eligible for up to either $360 or $390 a week. And um, it's, it's free money. I mean, that's it. And you can be self-employed. I'm not even sure how they're going to, like, I don't know how it's going to work, how you're going to have to, um, you know, what, is, it, is it means tested? Is it based on how much money you were making? Is it based on your, no, I don't think it's based on anything. I think it's based on you filling out a form, you are self-employed, you're going to get a check in the mail. And I think what's going to happen is there's going to be a ton of fraud and they'll worry about that later. I think they're just going to shovel money out the door uh, for self-employed people. Now, David, we've been, Julie and I have spent a lot of time researching all the names, uh, phone numbers, contacts of all the major mortgage companies. And now we're almost done getting the same information for everyone that wants to defer car payments. So we're, we're gathering all this information. We're going to give it away to agents. That way they can, don't have to say, well, I couldn't find the phone number. I didn't know what to do. And we're also doing it right now uh, for every single state uh, how to apply for unemployment benefits online. So we're doing all that research, and I'll tell you how they can get that. This is, um, I got to write it down, I got to remember. Oh, okay. tell them that they have to text the word survival to 31996. Tell everyone that. This is free. No strings attached. Text the word survival to 31996. And David, that's going to give them access to a free coaching program, which obviously is designed uh, not just for this market, but helping them develop their business forward. So all they got to do is text the word survival, um, you know, to 31996, and then they'll be texted a link, and then they click that link, and they'll be gone to a website. They, you know, basically uh, username, password, then they log in, and then there's a tile that's over to the left, or I see right-hand part of the screen. They click on it, and everything I'm talking about is there waiting for them, and we're updating it constantly. Like, that's great. That's probably great. seven times yesterday, and it's available to every agent in the country. It, it was originally only designed for EXP agents, frankly, but now it's available to every agent in the country, everybody who wants it. All they've got to do is go to the website. It's, there's no lead generation. There's no Mickey Mouse. It's just us trying to do what we can to save as many realtors from a, an absolutely horrible fate, which is waiting for everyone probably in May or June. Okay. So there's you, so much stuff there. I got a couple of things. Number one, yesterday, I got to do a shout out for my bank, Valley National in New Jersey. <clears throat> Um, they actually called me Whoa. and asked me how I was doing. And this is a commercial bit property. It's an investment property. And they called me and we talked about mortgage forbearance. And the first thing was, well, you know what? We'll give you, we'll, we're, we're open to a letter. You have to give them a letter and ask to uh, do the forbearance on the principal. I said, well, you know, that doesn't really make a lot of sense simply because it's a new loan, a two-year-old loan, and it's mostly interest now, Right. So they said, okay, we'll ask for principal and interest and we'll do this, that, and the other thing and we'll add it as a balloon payment at the end. Okay, so there's something else that people also need to think about. Maybe you can help me with this. Is, is It's P-I-T-I, is principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. So there's more people than just the bank you need to talk to. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah, go after everybody. Every single person you make money, you pay money to, 
call them up, they all have forbearances. So everybody does, credit card companies, cell phone companies, uh, property taxes, MLSs, National Association of Realtors, realtor fees, broker fees, everything needs to be put on forbearance. Stop your cash flow. So, so my, 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 my point is, and, my, and comment or question is, so the bank cannot say that they can give forbearance on taxes because the taxes are still due. You have to call them. You got to call the town, you got to yeah. call the city, you got to yeah. call your insurance company. So I've already done all that work. So that's something you need to do and let everybody know that that's it. Oh, well, well, David, there's a, couple, there's a couple things. You just said two things that are really important. Number one, they got to sure. call them. And that's the reason we gathered all the phone numbers. You can't just stop paying. <laughs> I hope everyone understands that. You stop paying, that's bad. So you got to, uh, we're going to give you the phone numbers. Just text the word survival to 31996. That's number one. Um, and, and number two, uh, I forget what number two was. Number two was a really good point. It would have changed everyone's life. It was the most interest, interest, tax huh? insurance, PITI, principal interest tax and insurance. Got to call everybody? Everybody. We'll just stick with that. It'll pop back in my mind. Time me. Usually 45 seconds when I lose a thought. It takes me Got 45 it. seconds to find it again. I'm going to set my watch. You watch. 45 seconds. So, well, so, but really, the, 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 what I'm hoping they understand is unlike every previous economic shit show that we've lived through, which has been a lot, there's never been any sort of specific um, reach out to help A, self-employed people, but B, to help, help um, you know, small business owners, really. It hasn't been like that. The expectation was we give the money to the banks and the banks loan it out. No, they won't. The banks kept the money, right. reinvested the money, bought their own stock back, made money with the money. They didn't really loan it out. Oh, here's the other thing I just remembered. Was it 45 seconds? Yes, it was. Just SBA loans. It was what? <laughs> SBA loans, Small Business Administration loans. Now, we've been watching this, and I'll tell you the, the best version of all the things that we've read and heard, okay? The best version is, and you should do this too. Everybody should do this. Uh, again, I'm going to give you what I like the best of what I've heard, but I haven't seen the final stuff because all this is going to be officially announced and rolled out next week. Now, I want to – SBA loans, don't let me forget. I'm going to talk about this. If you go to the SBA's website – if you go to any government website, you have to remember, they, do, they will do press releases, and then sometimes as much as seven to 10 days later, they update their website. So that's the reason that we're grabbing the press releases, and we're grabbing the legislation, we're reading the legislation, and then that's what we're putting on that Survival 31996 website. We're not waiting for the update. So SBA's website, for example, is not updated, but here's what's gonna happen next week. We expect, and if this happens, <laughs> David, every single person, you, me, everyone needs to do this. We expect there to be uh, SBA loans available to small business owners. Again, I think it's going to be a focus on 50 em uh, employees or fewer. The money is going to be usable for virtually anything. They're hoping you're going to use it basically to pay your employees, but they're not going to be able to really govern what you're using the money for. They just wire it to your account. I've never done an SBA loan before, but I researched how it works. And it's going to be, for when I read, it's going to be zero interest for five years, and it's going to be non-recourse. Really? Yeah. yeah. I thought you'd like that one. I love that so, one. Okay. Non-recourse means they cannot go after your personal assets, guys. You're not signing for personally. You're signing as a business owner. So if you are a – look, David's really excited about that one. I so am. If, if, if you have – if you're <laughs> a small business owner, if you're a real estate agent, and you have – you're incorporated, and your one employee is you, you probably qualify. So everybody, now, again, the program could come out. And it could be nothing like what I just said. And if you go to SBA's website now, today is March 27th. It's not what I just said. But what I'm reading coming out of just different places in Washington, D.C., it's what I just said. And that's part of the $4 uh, trillion that's on the back end that's not being talked about on CNN and Fox News and all the rest of it. So those are the programs that we're going to be telling everybody about and we're going to obviously tell agents how to apply for SBA loans, too. Well, as, as Frank Barone would say, holy crap, right? Yes. So, yes. so anyway, okay, so, so let's, go to, let's go to another point that, that I want to – it's, it's and, not David, – they're not just loans. They're grants, too. Some of them are going to be grants. Some of them are going to be 90-day grants. A grant, you do not have to pay back. A grant, no. Okay, so they're going to – right. So, okay, so – you talked about cutting everything off, cut off, I mean, your website, all this stuff, cut it all off. So let's talk about the aggressive nature of some people. 
I talked to several people over the past day or two that talked about, okay, well, you know what? I got to double down on Facebook ads. I said, no, if you're no. going to double my, here's my point. If you're going to double down on anything, the only thing you can double down is on awareness. You can't be cheesy. You've got to just make sure maybe you want, want to help people. Maybe you do, uh, uh, let's just call it quote unquote public service stuff. How can I help you? We're here for you. I don't know. Does that make sense doubling down on awareness or engagement rather than well, so, lead? So I've been, do, I've been doing things like this, small groups and, and large groups. And personally, so far, yours is my favorite one because you and I are having a real conversation. And every time I do one of these things, everybody starts talking about centers of influence and past clients. And I'm, look, duh, right? Centers of influence, past clients is the first thing we teach people in our coaching program. That's the first spoke on your lead generation wheel, but it's also the easiest one that requires no skill. Hey mom, you want to sell your house? Good stuff. Right. Hey, it's November. Here's a pumpkin pie. All for it. But here's the thing. If I were to give you a list, well, first of all, they need to be concentrating on how to make money now. Centers of influence and past clients is not how to make money now. How to make money now is going to be the stuff that most agents, especially in the last uh, generation of agents, generation being a decade, they've never learned how to do. Because if you've only been licensed, I mean, David, listen, you and I have been around the block a few times. You think, <laughs> think about all the lead buying crap that's come out since 2007 to 2008. So all these agents that have only, and what percent of the agents listening to you and watching you right now have only been um, in the business since 2007, 2008. I bet you 90%. What do you think? Maybe I 95%. Oh, I, oh I, I agree. I agree 100%. So they have no idea how to proactively lead generate. None. Not a clue. Not a clue. And that's the reason that everyone's grabbing pain towards their influence of past clients. And that's why it's doing Facebook ads and TikTok. And they're doing all this other stuff because it's easy, it's fun. But I think the real reason is it's because they don't know any better because no one's ever told them. So here's what I want to, a, a thought I want to have for all of you. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm fearful that if we don't completely put a period at the end of the sentence with regards to the government programs, we're going to do a disservice. Can we go back to lead generation in a second? Yes. And I'll, I, won't, I won't let you forget that point, but go ahead. Go to lead gen. Thank you for writing it down. So, so here's the thing that I'm fearful. Well, I'm going to go, well, let me go back. That way we can go for it. Yeah, we'll come for it. Right. Sure. I, I'm fearful that a lot of the agents will be listening. And I'm Julie and I are from Columbus, Ohio. And I totally completely have, we are, we are libertarians with a conservative bet. And I hate the idea that I just told people to file for unemployment. I hate the idea that I told people just to basically tap into the bailout. It literally makes my hair stand up on ends. But here's the thing. I had to work this through in my own mind so I could help our coaching clients understand why this is not like that. If you decide, if, when you can again, because you can't now, to take a flight from you know, the East Coast to the West Coast, and whatever airline it is loses your luggage, are they liable, loses luggage, are they liable to replace the luggage and the content and the value of the contents of the luggage? Are they liable for that because they lost it? No. Yes, they are. David. They don't care. Airline, yeah, but you got to fight for it. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but you have to fight for it. But the airline is legally liable on your ticket. It says the maximum amount. If you read the small print on your ticket, Sorry, it says yeah. that for every lost bag, they'll pay you this much or this much or this much. They're legally liable because they lost your luggage. Here's what's happening now. This is the reason this is different. Your business, your, your listeners and fans, my listeners and fans and coaching clients, they did not create this problem for themselves. Back in 07 and 08, you could argue that the bailouts were bailing out people that were irresponsible. The people now were not irresponsible. They were doing great, running their businesses, doing the right things for the most part. And then all of a sudden, the government says, you're shut down. You're shut down. You're out of business. You cannot have, that's it. Stay at home. When that happened, it wasn't the individual business owner's fault that their business is failing because most businesses are failing right now. It was the government's fault for having uh, taken that draconian measure. Yes, for the public good, yes, for health. I'm not disagreeing with that. But the moral of the story that I'm trying to help people understand is do not wait to apply for these programs because like 07 and 08, these programs will just become harder to get. There will be bureaucratic overlays for everything. Right now, it's going to be relatively easy to get forbearances starting next week. Uh, two, three months from now, they're going to, the bureaucrats, here's what they're going to do. They're going to get so many applications, the banks. They're going to have so many requests. 
they are going to add steps and procedures to slow down the processing. That's what they do. They're not going to say no. They're going to say, okay, now you have to start providing this and start providing that. If you anyone knows about lending, it's called lender overlay, overlays. Same type of thing's going to happen on mortgage forbearance and all these car things like you know, car loan forbearance, lease forbearance, credit card forbearance, cell phone forbearance. They're all going to start making it more and more difficult. So do this now. Do not wait. Text the word survival to 31996. Okay, leads. All right, wait a minute. I'm going to, have, I'm going to ask a question now. You said uh -oh. very succinctly, very, very specifically, ask for forbearance on everything, your cell everything. phone, everything. So you got to call the company and get somebody on the phone and ask yep. them for it. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, they have to call. And we have most of the phone numbers for most of the lenders on the reports that we're giving. We're calling it the Ultimate Agent Survival Guide. That's what they can download free when they join that free coaching program. That's awesome. one of the things. Yeah. Awesome. So that's where we're putting it all. Yeah. All right. Here's, here's where we left off. How to make money now. Okay. That's where we're at. Yes. So I have 100 centers of influence and past clients for you to call, or I have 100 expired for you to call. Which are you going to call first? I'm calling the expireds first. Most other agents, most people out there, David, because they don't know how to, won't. Ninety-five percent of the agents listening right now, they won't because they don't know how to. They've never learned. They're mm -hmm. going to call their centers of influence and past clients. But why are you going to call the expireds first? It's obvious, right? Right? Why are they going to? Good time for a test. It's because you know they want to sell. All right, that's the toughest question I'll give you. Exactly. You know they have to sell. You know what the price isn't. You know they'll pay a commission. You know they're going to hire a real estate agent. And once you know what to say when you're making the phone call, once you know how to, you know, pre-qualify, once you actually have, you know, dare I say, sales skills, then what's going to happen is you're going to realize that doing all the passive stuff has been an utter waste of time. And for the past 10 years, you've been absolutely letting the ball get by you because of the fact that you've been believing that, you know, Instagram videos and all the passive stuff is the way you build a business. It's not the way you build a business, guys. It's just some silliness that's come up. It's been a long-term fad that this, uh, you know, pandemic is going to kill, like iBuying. You think those iBuyers are going to come back like they did before? Not a chance. Not a freaking chance. So, so expires. Um, and again, we're going to teach agents how to do all this in that program. Uh, work with BPOs. We're going to teach them how to go after probate business. We're going to teach them how to do, there's, there's probably realistically, I'm trying to, we're trying to focus on what are the things that they can do that won't require money to do. That's what we're focusing on in the coaching program. And the coaching program is free and all they have to do is text the word survival to 31996. And we enhanced it yesterday because we're getting such a good response, frankly. It's motivating for us to see people appreciating it. They get a daily semi-private coaching call for free as part of the free program. Okay, so you, so I'm gonna to go to something else you said earlier and then we can jump around a bit. One of the things you, you mentioned was that people, uh, you, you mentioned the word, the letters EXP as far as, um, as far as people knowing how to do something. I, it, I noticed that recently that, that the agents that are with EXP have been, have been putting their stuff out that they're prepared and they've been prepared and they're ready to go um, this is not a big deal to them, um, and others are not. I mean, do you think in this in this pandemic, in this isolation, in this quarantine, it makes sense to talk about who you work for as a as a matter of the future, or is it is it not a good idea to do that? You're asking me if it's tacky for agents to be trying to build their downlines. Is that the question? I guess so. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, personally, I don't think it's ever tacky for you to tell somebody about something that you feel will be, uh, they'll improve their lives. And, and furthermore, even uh -oh. program, I'm pushing the survival of 31996. Okay. We're going to get a benefit from that because a lot of the people that are joining that program are going to eventually become paid clients. But yeah. So am I, am I fearful of being a capitalist and being perceived as somebody who's going to, you know, make money? Hell no. That's my job. I'm a business owner. So as far as like, if I have something I know that's going to help you, even if it benefits me to tell you about it, does that mean I shouldn't tell you about it? That's a disconnect I don't get. I never have understood that way of thinking. It doesn't make well, sense to me. 
Yeah. No, because I mean, I mean, right now when you talk about you know tech survival, the three one nine nine six. I mean, what you're saying is, hey, I got this information for you. Hey, look, I, look, with all due respect, it's a great marketing tool. Right? Sure, of course. I'm not done. You're, you're, you're giving free stuff away. I mean, look, I, I listened and learned from, from some of the best over the years. I've been doing video for 12, 13, 14 years, and I learned from, from Mike Koenigs and, 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 and Frank Kern and all those people that have been around for years that are legendary in video and in mar internet marketing. So this is like, to me, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just standard operating procedure. Would you agree with that? I do, but you know, it, it is bizarre to me how, not, I mean, we could talk about it if, if you'd like to, but it is bizarre to me I need to. how some people, it, you know, really, David, what your question is based on is going back to your mindset really about um, being of service to other people, frankly, and uh, your mindset about being perceived as a salesperson, really. I mean, there's, these go, and I, know you, and I, I know you are asking the question for the betterment of your listeners and your viewers. Yes. But the reality of it is the only, the only reason that people don't do real over the phone work is because of their thinking about themselves. They're thinking about how is that person going to perceive me if I, David, if I call you and I talk to you, because Julie and I are involved in EXP and we love it. It was the best. It's an unbelievable brokerage. So we'll just do a little commercial, right? It's, it's literally the brokerage of every single agent should have joined prior to the pandemic because then they would be receiving multiple streams of income and they would not be many of the agents listening and watching you would not be in the same financial position. So EXP's value proposition, the genius behind what that was what was created, has always been there, but now it is so obviously an amazing business model that you're gonna see, in my opinion, this is gonna be an, a huge growth curve for EXP. I just hope corporate can keep up, because you're gonna see all these brokers with tiny little profit margins who are going to want to join. Teams are going to want to join. Agents are going to want to join. Everybody's going to want to join EXP because it just freaking makes sense. It's such a no-brainer. The value proposition to agents is unparalleled. I mean, again, I don't want to talk about it endlessly. There's lots of information out there. Um, if they want to, you know, the little seven-minute video that's out there, if yep. we have that up too, if they, if they want to watch that, just text the word EXP to 31996, and they can watch the video. How can they get hold of you about EXP? What's that? I'm making you solicit. Oh, sure. How okay. can they get a hold of you? I think you mean, very go to, go to www.dfinale.org slash join. So it has D as in David, F as in Frank, A, N as in Nancy, A-L-E, dot work slash join j-o-i-n that's how they get to me with the with the exp there it is and and for us it's just text the word exp to 31996 but so let's go to why people are afraid to have sales conversations in a market like this because they don't want to be perceived as ambulance chasers they have all this con negative connotations in their mind about being perceived as a salesperson but here's our perception, here's what we teach our coaching clients. A salesperson is somebody that helps people. That's it, that's what a salesperson is. And the more, there's a direct relationship between the quality of your life, the experiences you have on this planet, the material goods you have, the ability to help other people, the money you can give away, the food you put in your belly, the house you live in, all of that. There's a direct correlation between those experiences and the level of those experiences and the number of people you help. So if you're not helping enough people, you're never going to experience the same things you would have had you learned how to help more people. People, and, and grace, there's, and this has always been true, the, and people don't like this word, but I'll, I'll soften the blow here in a second for those who are very sensitive to this word. But what is rich? Rich is where your money works for you and you no longer work for your money. That's it. So you can be rich if, you're, if you have a fixed cost of $5,000 a month and you are having $5,000 a month come in, by definition, you're rich. You no longer have to work for your money. Your money is working for you. So rich doesn't have to be this 1% politicized, you know, culturally dividing Mickey Mouse bullshit conversation that basically perpetuates everything. It doesn't have to be like that. Maybe you need $3,500. Maybe you need $10,000. So rich is where you have money coming in. And once you have the security of that passive income coming in, and traditionally, for old birds like you and me, it's been from rental properties. It's been from things like that. But now EXP offers, you can still buy your rental properties, but so many different ways to make passive income. That's in my mind, that was one of the biggest reasons why I thought it was just the best thing since sliced bread. But why are people afraid to talk?
to um, anybody about and have sales conversations. The real essence of it is because they're concentrating on themselves. They're thinking about how am I going to, it's all subconscious, right? It's lizard brain stuff. How am I going to feel? Yeah, I'm going to call up David. I'm going to ask him about his expired listing. How am I going to feel if David says something mean to me? How am I going to feel if David asks a question I don't know the answer to? How am I going to feel? Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, I'm having trouble. Siri is ah. listening and taking notes. Siri. <laughs> Our Siri is a serious perv, by the way. I don't know about yours. Is it what? Uh, she's a perv. I, I believe that. Oh, I, I got a, Alexa upstairs. She's a, she's a perv as well. She's listening in all the time. I know. I mean, it's, it's not a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, so that, that's what I, that's what people need to hopefully take from this is that you don't, don't detach yourself from the idea that you're a salesperson. And, and this is true and this is amazing. The wealthiest people in the history of he, history, the most successful people in the history of history, the most revered people in the history of hi, history, the most religiously respected, politically respected, best authors, best actors, best whatever you want to call it, have been great salespeople. There are no exceptions. You cannot be a great doctor, a great um, poet. <laughs> you cannot be a great anything unless you're a great salesperson. You have to sell people on essentially why they should listen to you and give a crap about what you have to say. That's the essence of it all. And if you cannot do that, you will. no matter how smart you are, you can be a dummy, but be a great salesperson and be incredibly successful. It's 100%. 100%. Hundred um, percent. So we've got we've got the survival guide for agents. The text survival to three one one three nine. Oh Jesus! No, no, I got it. I got it. You so listen. I'll give you some of my uh, prescription. Okay, hit it up. Watch, I appreciate right. that. The text survival to three one nine nine six. You got it. That that is for to get all the information about the mortgage companies and their phone numbers, yep. as well as a free coaching program to help them all trade. Don't go, listeners, listen, I know a lot of you are going to jump on that. Don't just go constantly because we're updating it constantly. I just frankly hope we can keep up with it. To be honest with you, that's what I'm worried about on the tech side. But you have to go all the time because that information is going out. We're updating it. Literally, we update it probably six or seven times a day as new information comes out. We're not going to email you. We're not going to text you. You go to the website. You get the information. You listen to the podcast. You get the information. So, so I want, I want to jump into one other thing that we talked about. I want to take a little one step further. So we talked about how to get business today. We talked about expires, BPOs, you're going to do probate, probate business and stuff. So, all right, today, today we're in this uh, quarantine, isolation, whatever the hell you want to call it. Should people be doing that today? Calling expires? Yes. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, here, let's look at it from an opportunistic capitalistic perspective. Forgive me for being so, you know, Politically incorrect, but You're here it is. Okay, right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So uh, you have a whole generation of agents who have been taking listings, mostly from centers of influence and past clients. And all the interviews that I've done in the past decade, most of the agents have centers of influence and past clients-based businesses. When the market shifts, those are the agents that are hurt the most because they've never learned sales skills. So what happens is when the market becomes tough, and the sellers become more uh, uh, you know, particular about who they hire because they want to hire someone who actually has the skill set, right. then the agents who never, look, if you have a center of influence past client business and you know how to work in this market, that's good. But you have to have proactive lead generation folks too, but most agents don't. And these are the people that argue with me. They say, I'm going to you know, double down on my center of influence and past clients. That's fine. What happens when they have a house that's underwater? What happens if they have to sell the house for less than they paid for it. What happens? Duh, 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 duh. They don't have the answers to those questions. They got to get their skills on. So this last market was about who you knew. It was a relationships business. This new market is what you know. It's a skills-based business. And it's going to be that way, guys. This is not going to be a 90-day cycle. This is going to be probably, you're looking at this being, for sure, this is going to be something that's going to be felt in all of our businesses for probably the next two or three years, maybe even longer, in a profound way. All right, so let me, let, me, right, let me give you a question from the person uh, that is going to disagree with what you said. So, but the thing is, the thing is uh, uh, Tim, is that we're talking about we have to build relationships. That's what our business is all about. This is what people have been telling me 
for 10, 15 years, it's all about relationships. And you're telling me now that I need to have skills? <laughs> are you being facetious? Yes, you are. A little. But yes, a little. Well, I'm not, again, not saying to not work your stairs of influence on past clients. Go back to the, you have 100 call, contacts you can make today by calling, which by the way, I know we just lost your, most of your listeners and your viewers. Uh, by calling, not emailing, not texting, not Facebooking, not social networking, not TikToking, by picking up the phone. So you have 100 centers of influence and past clients, and you have 100 expires. And your goal is to make money. You call the expires because they already have their hands in the air saying, yes, sell my house. There are probably 20 different sources of business like that. Those calls, David, are to people you do not know and will require skill. You will have to know what to say and how to say it. This does not require skill. It doesn't. This is just you being a nice guy. Exactly. This requires skill. This is what you need to focus on. This is what you're going to need to know how to do in this new market. So in other words, it's going to require, it's going to require maybe a little training and also practice. People need to be oh, yeah. prepared, right? So our, our mutual yeah. friend, Sean Kokoska, said last week, the biggest yeah. problem is that people are not prepared, right? Because right. they haven't practiced. I use the, I love to use the example of, 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 of sports stars. I'll, I'm going to use Derek Jeter, you know. He made 50-some errors his first year in professional baseball. What did he do to get to the major leagues? He practiced. He worked on his skills. His skills got better. Now to be go down in history as one of the greatest shortstops that ever lived. You can say it about football, any other sport. They're practicing. They're doing it. And they're, 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 they're honing, to use a word, honing their skills. And that's what people need. That's why I asked the question, and it was a bit facetious. I know that. I didn't want it's to make fine. it stupid. It's fine. That was yeah. the point, right? Because I, I, I harp on this all the time in my business to help agents. You've got to practice. You've got to do the work. You've got to build your skills and get better at what you're freaking doing because you, if, if, if you don't want to sound like an idiot, be prepared, right? Absolutely. And, you know, it, it, com it comes down to doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Doing what you don't want to do, which is pretty much any, all the things you've been avoiding for the past, you know, decade, when you don't want to do it, which is on a schedule at the highest level. A lot of people will maybe get to the second part of that, but not the third part. They'll just call it in and they won't do the work. Our book, which is on Amazon, and no, this, this is not actual size, <laughs> called Harris Rules. You know, I think it's got four or five hundred five-star reviews. It's not self-published. It's a real book. It's available at Barnes & Noble and all your major booksellers. It is going to be available. Everyone asks us about when the audiobook is coming out. We are told, the publisher said, the audiobook's coming out later this year. Who knows? Um, but get the book, and that's going to take everyone through essentially our philosophy of being successful long-term in real estate. And, and look, guys, I'm going to tell you some other things. I like to throw these things out there because it makes people a little mad. Teams, eh, going to go away. Big teams, mega teams, expansion teams, all these unprofitable business models. See, in the past seller's market where the cash was flowing, it made up for bad business decisions. Like agents would be, agents would be buying websites, buying gimmicks, and paying for shiny silver, you know, whatever gimmick crap thing that they thought would work. And they never stopped to actually figure out whether or not it was working to generate business. They rationalized what it was, that it was working because the cash was flowing. When the cash stops flowing, you have to realize those things weren't really doing anything anyway. All these tech companies that were trying to um, essentially embolden people not to re learn real sales skills, see if they're around in 18 months, let alone six. They won't be. They're out. Wow, that's that's... That's a heavy duty comment, man, saying that, that, that the teams and stuff are out. I, I get well, that. But so let's, let's drill down on that because Sean, who's basically a brother of me, Sean Kokoska, he and I have this conversation. Wait, he, yeah. likes, he, he likes to, oh, yeah, I love him. He likes, I've known Sean for, uh, since I was uh, 24. I'm 50. So um, Sean likes to poke me. He always likes to say, Tim and Julie are anti teams. No, we're not. We're anti non profitable teams. And so if you have, it, it, this is a, this is like, and I, no one can argue against this. If you look at a team that basically has a, a million dollars in GCI, the net that that team uh, owner, the head of the team will be earning is going to be plus or minus a hundred thousand dollars. Just a statistical fact. Some people will say, oh, what are you talking about? My number's 15% or 
you know, and then you'll have other people will say, my number's way better than that. And I roll in all personal expenses and all the rest of it. Well, you mean you cheat on your taxes? I wouldn't be bragging about that. Now, if you look at, for example, an agent who has a GCI of, say, 120 grand, maybe 130 grand, their net income is going to be the same as the team that was earning a million. It doesn't make sense to me. The no. teams have no profit. You're absolutely correct. And you look at brokerages, too, and, and, and I look at people Man. that people say, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to get my own place. I'm going to get my own. Why the f would you do that? Because why the what? I said, what's why that? Why? why the what? It started why? with an F, I think. Why, yeah, the, no, it's true. why the it's F would you do that? Right? Yeah. I mean, you said before, and I'm going to stand correct because I thought the number, I my average really was 4%. You said 3%. Oh, dude, most of them are making 2%. Julie and I consult. Julie and I consult with a ton of brokerages around the country, and we're getting we're getting inundated with panic calls, right? Because they don't know what to tell their agents. We're telling them to tell their agents what we're telling them, what we're telling everyone who listens to us. Same damn thing, you know. Uh, but they're making most of them are making two percent. It's a good month or quarter when they make three percent. So I, I only know I only know one that makes more than three percent that has more than two hundred agents. When you get when you scale up. Your margins get smaller, but someone's saying, Tim, you don't know how to do your math. Yes, I do. I've done it. I've looked at the profit and loss statements. Well, Tim, uh, why did Gary Keller back in 1989 say, okay, I've talked to Gary Keller. I've asked him uh, why he hasn't come out and basically said the expansion teams are unprofitable and why the teams are unprofitable. And he, he, was, he basically said what's happened in his original business – he took his original business model as a millionaire real estate agent, and he says this. Gary's a totally stand-up guy. He took this from Howard Britton. Julie and I were Howard Britton stars. So a lot of the original KW people that helped him create that book were get, got their training from Howard Britton. Howard Britton, essentially, back in the 90s, was essentially the biggest thing since sliced bread. I'm sure you remember. God rest his soul. Yep. Yeah. All right. So what they did is Gary Keller's book emulated that. Then all the MAPS training emulated that. But what happened between 1989, 1990, and 2000 and now is that the, all these agents, the commissions went down. Um, agents stopped focusing on profit, which Gary in his book and the Howard training always said profit first, which is what we say first. Eight, the people started buying leads. Expenses went up. All these things changed. So that business model does not work. It doesn't. So if you guys think, and look, you can't sell it. No one's going to buy your team. Here, here's the fun part. This is in our book. See, this is what happens when I've listened to my doctor. My brain works. Okay. I get that 100%, man. Keep going. So, great. What is your, what is your, I, I'm not going to ask you this question. It's rhetorical. So what is, listeners, viewers, what is the pro product of your business? What is it that you produce? I know we've asked this question before. Usually one person gets it right. But people will say, sold home, happy customer, good customer service. To rattle off all these touchy feely things, it's profit. Your product is profit. If you're not creating profit by 20, 30, 40, 50 percent out of your business, you are not running a business. You're running a nonprofit because the only way you're going to get rich, where your money works for you, you no longer have to work for your money, is if you have profit from your business that you then reinvest in things that make you passive income. But most agents and virtually all brokers never have any profit, never can get rich. And that's the reason brokers are still working. They never retire. They just oh. fade away eventually in the door. Or they get smart and they join EXP. Honestly, that's really, if I hire a broker, I hit that graceful exit button and I'd become part of EXP like that. Especially now. It's just going to get worse. But your product is profit. And if you aren't making profit, you are not running a business that is, you know, frankly viable. You're running a nonprofit business. Does that make sense? It makes a hundred percent of sense. And I can tell you as, as, as a broker owner for 21 years, if I, I was happy that 4% if I got there and I did get there a couple of years, I got there a little higher, but you know what? There was, there's a couple of main reasons I got out. One was profit. And the other was that, you know what? I just decided if I was going to do this anymore, I needed to work with people that wanted to work. It was just too freaking painful to work with people and say, hey, I'm going to go do this, Dave. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And the next thing you know, the next day, you say, oh, well, you know, I didn't have time. Um, some, uh, uh, um, uh, the dog well, ate you, my you at, Well, the, the, so you're tied to their outcome. That's what's terrible about being a broker. Exactly. Your future is tied to their ability to actually 
do what they're supposed to do when they don't want to do it at the highest level. And, and most people won't. And, and then I'm going to take it to the next level is I had, I had an offer for another position at uh, a name of a company that you've mentioned throughout today. Um, and it was all tied to agents, to agents of production. And I said, I just got out of that. Why would I want to go back into it? Even though there's, there's a good upside, you know what? Not good for my heart, not good for my head. What I'm doing now is just so much more enjoyable. I'm actually working with people that want to work as you are. Right. Um, so this has been, not this, all of them. well, true. Yeah. I, I mean, I, some, some, of, some of them need to count. So, so, you know, it's, it's funny when you, when you're in the product. So I consider what we sell a product, right? I mean, it's yeah. a service basically, but it's a product. Yes. And it was the hardest lesson for me to learn was to disassociate myself with um, like, so if, I, if my job is to make uh, coffee cups, right? I'm a guy who makes coffee cups. My job is to make the best coffee cup I can. My job is to make it so it holds, you know, liquid. It doesn't blow up in the dishwasher. Someone can have this coffee cup forever. This is my job is to make this coffee cup so the market will buy it, pay it, da 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 da. And I pay my bills. Now, if someone uses this coffee cup, breaks it, and slits somebody's throat, I'm not responsible for that because my job was to make the coffee cup. So ultimately, my job as someone who creates a product, and your job as somebody who creates a product, is to create the best product with the most integrity that will work if they use it. And then the emotional part, which I'm not completely comfortable with, is very difficult. It's the hardest thing in my business for me personally, is then if is to not uh, feel attached to their outcome. But if I feel attached to their outcome, then I lose because then it takes my ability way to be to to uh, feel creative and motivated to help the people that are going to use the product as design. You understand? Understood 100. percent And and the way that I, I work through that so that I'm not attached to the outcome is that if I do my best job every day and if I show up all the time, be completely and totally authentic and give everything that I've got with the passion that you've seen I have here and the passion that you have, I've done my job and I can only hope that they do theirs. And if they don't, I can't help that. I can't hold their hand, although I'll try. Shh, Julie's popping in. Why? Sorry, I was asking a few questions. No, I'm good, thank you. Sorry, <laughs> perils of working from home. Did she, did, she, did she want to know if you want another cup of coffee? No, she knows I don't need any more of that. She can uh, hear me. No, it smells like Starbucks in here. <laughs> it smells like Starbucks in <laughs> here. So, so, so um, uh, I, I, you know what? Um, I, this is this has been phenomenal, and and one of the things I know this happens every week, Tim. That the reason that people wind up coming on, they don't really care too much about me, but they want one of these, right? Oh, I want one. Oh, I like okay. it. Well, that's why you came on. You wanted to. I said the only way I can uh -huh. that's it. You come on, right? So this is this is the uh, the authentic real estate skill builder hat, and uh, we're going to be sending that to you. And thank you so much for coming on. But I got to tell you though, um, you know what I do ask everybody is to return the swag. So you know you're going to have yeah. to return. Right, okay. I'll, I'll right. be expecting so, uh, in return. I'm not going to take my hat off because I look because I need a haircut and I look like a lunatic right now. My hair goes like, Oof. but. <laughs> You can have, you can have, this is a nice embroidered patch. Love these it. hats are, so in black or camo, what, so what would you prefer? You know what? I camo looks badass. Well, here's the thing. If I wear camo, people aren't going to see it because it's going to be, <laughs> never mind. Bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I always see somebody wearing camo pants and I say, I say to them. You'll blend. I say, I can't see them. I can't see them. Anyway. All right, we'll do, we'll do our swag exchange, no problem. Cool. So anyway, um, we already know how people can get in touch with you, but formally, please tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. Do you hear me? Well, honestly, I, always get, I get my cell phone number, really, in a market like this. If you guys, if look, if you're, some, if you're a broker and you need help, especially, that's what I uh, specialize in. Just text me at 512 seven five eight oh two oh six if you want to talk about look there i am honestly feeling emotional um uh because i know that there's a lot of people out there and i think you, i know you feel the same way i can listen to you and hear you see it that are not going to engage at the highest level with all the things we just said in 60 90 120 days from now they're going to be experiencing unneeded hardship if they just would have taken action on what we said 
We right. saw it before. And if they've never been in the real estate business before, they have no idea the shit show that we're entering into as far as this market. And we're doing everything we can, listen to us or don't. The product that we're creating, we know it's going to be, it is, and it has continued to be, what we feel is the best in the marketplace. This free coaching program, it's free. Just text the word survival to 31996. And um, everyone should just immediately do that. But if you're a broker, you need a grace flex it out of your brokerage. You need to figure out a way to make it so that, you know, frankly, you don't go down with the ship just being blunt. Go ahead and text me directly at 512 0206 I have a lot of people asking me if Julie and I are taking any personal clients. Julie is. I'm not. So there's that. But in the meantime, everyone should be texting the word survival to 31996. That's, that's amazing, Tim. I, I want to thank you so much. I want to, I, I want to give out a, a couple little things. Number one, um, one of the things that I've tried to, I have problems with, with, with distractions. I have problems with focus. So I try to get a lot of different things in my head so that I do it. And, it's, and, and what I've been doing has been working lately. And one of the things I live by, and I look at it all day long, it's to be so freaking committed to what's best for my heart that I'm willing to sit through the most uncomfortable pain of growth that I refuse to accept anything less than complete love, alignment, and success. That's how I'm living my life these days, in complete and total commitment to that one thing or that thing that I know I need to do to commit to. Look, all the stuff we've talked about as far as building your business is tough. It's not easy, and we've got the distractions, especially now since we're stuck in our homes because there's food, there's TV, there's radio. We can walk around the house. Oh, look, there's something on the floor. Let me pick that up to distract myself. There's all kinds of bullshit around to stop us. You need to get your mindset right and commit to it. I just wanted to end with that. Any any last last minute words you want to you add? You did it, man. That was a home run. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My, name is, Dave, my name is Dave Finale. This is Tim Harris. Um, and uh, we want to thank you all for, come, for, for watching this. And I apologize for the tech difficulties that you'll be watching this after it was live. But again, you want to reach me, you, I'm all over Facebook. And uh, as you made me say before, www.dfinale.work slash join if you want to really know how to work virtual. Tim, thanks so much for staying on and doing this. Well, oh, my pleasure. God bless. Be safe and be healthy.